Hello, I've been asked to go through this question on uh, hypothesis testing, which is always a fun topic. So let's give it a go. Historical data suggests that 20% of motorists regularly exceed the speed limit on a motorway. Now, this percentage, it's already seems to me like this is a probability. Um, and this is what we're going to be testing. So let's have a look. A new law is introduced increasing the penalties for speeding, and the police suspect there has been a reduction in the number of motorists speeding, okay, which means the probability of, of motorists speeding, it, you know, any motorist that goes past the camera uh, will be reduced. So that is a probability that we're going to use. A sample size of 30, so uh, that gives us n is 30. So I'm going to write that down just to be extra explicit. Write down the hypotheses that should be used to test the police's suspicion. So we need an H naught. So the status quo is that the probability is 0 0.2, which is what we know to be the case already. We're now suspecting, or at least the police are suspecting, that this has gone down. So this is a one-tailed test because we're only looking at it going down. So Hypothesis one is going to be that the probability is less than 0 0.2. And that's what we're going to be testing. Find the critical region for the test and use a significance level of 5%. So if you've forgotten what that means, it means um, if we have a sample size of 30 and, and the critical region changes uh, depending on the number of people that are in the sample size. So that is a, a, a key factor. But assuming that there's 30 people in the sample size, how many people do we need to uh, you know, be caught speeding um, in order to be confident that the probability has gone down, that, that the, you know, there is a reduction in the number of people? Because if we get, well, if we get 20% of these uh, 30 people, if we get six people, well, then no, it's, it's clear that that's still true. It's still 20%. But what if we get 18%? Would we then be, you know, it's gone down, but we need to be confident that it's gone down because 18 is close enough to 20 that it could just been, you know, a good day uh, in terms of people not speeding. Um, so what about 10%? If we got like 1%, then surely that would give us, you know, confidence that it has come down hugely from 20. But where do we draw the line? And that's what hypothesis testing is all about. It's saying this is where we draw the line. And so the other key information is the significance level. To be confident um, to a 5% significance level. And that means that there's only 5% chance that this could happen as random. So if we say four people, if four people, which is fewer than the six we would expect, we'd expect six. So if I see four people speeding, then I am 95% confident that that is less than, than what it was because of the penalty increase and not just an only 5% probability that those, you know, that it's lower, it's four instead of six, just by random chance, just because today is a good day. So we're looking for that amount of people that is low enough to be 95% sure that it's happened because of the penalties and not just because of random chance. So the key information here is the 30, 5% and the 0 0.2. That's what we're going to be looking at. In order to, to find this, uh, we need the tables um, either at the back of the textbook or in the formula sheet. So uh, knowing these values now, uh, I'll just put 5% as well, uh, we need to move to those tables. So here's the tables in the textbook. We've got an N of 30. So we need to flick through until we get here, n is 30. 
up at the top we've got all these columns and up at the top it has p equals and for us p equals 0 0.2 so we can only do questions using the table when it's nice regular you know um every 0.5 um i'm sorry every 0.05 uh, 0 .5, uh probability of five percent on what we're testing and because we're testing a 20 percent probability it's here 0 0.2 if you had something weird, um, then you'd have to do a sort of trial and error search on the calculator. Uh, here we've got 0 0.2, so we're looking in this column here. So I'm going to draw a line down here, so we will I'll draw two lines, so we can see that this is the column we're looking at when we scroll down. Okay, so we've got the right section with the n equals 30. We've got the right column with the Right, here we go with the um, uh, probability of 0 0.2 and now we need to find the five percent so what we need to do is we need to look through this until we get um, you know what will be within five percent and what is not so if we say you know, if no one was speeding well then that's great uh, and this is less than uh, five percent so that would definitely show us that it's gone down. Uh, one person, you can see that here, x equals 0, 1, etc. Et so one person, fine. Two people um, is still fine because it's 0 0.04, so that's 4.42%. Uh, but then three people is 0 0.12, so that's 12, just over 12%. Uh, and we have to have a significance uh, value of five. So to be confident that it's gone down, uh, that the actual chance has gone down by just watching 30 people, we would need to see only two people to be like, yeah, it's definitely because of the uh, raise in the penalty fees. If we saw three or four, yeah, it's fewer, but it might just be today. And uh, we'd have to say, well, you'll have to, you know, make more observations over a longer period. So the critical region, therefore, is that x is less than or equal to the value of 2. If we get 2, we're fine. Anything less than 2, this is our region where we have uh, confirmed, or maybe not confirmed, but where we have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis, which would lead us to look at the hypothesis one. Just whilst we're here, let me just show you that if they had picked more people, so if I go from n is 30 up to 40, still in the um, in 0 0.2, so 0 0.2 here, I mean, it's red everywhere, so it's tricky to see, but here's 2%. You um, see, we can go up to three people. So if they just stay and watch more people, then uh, more people could go through and, and be caught speeding and yet still have that confidence. It is very much dependent on the sample size. If we go again to uh, 50, then we've got 1%, 4% there is uh, the limit, and that would give us a critical region all the way up to 5. So, um, you know, remember 6 was the number that we would get if, if it hasn't changed at all. So just going up to 50, we can go up to, we just need to see one fewer that day to be confident that uh, that it has gone down uh, significantly. And uh, so it, that N value plays a huge role and you do need to make sure you're in the right place in the table, otherwise you're gonna get it all wrong. So let's scoot back to the questions and see where we're up to. So find the critical region for the test. It's this, x is less than or equal to 2. Uh, let's get rid of some of the just unnecessary scribbles. OK, so on a particular day, police observed that three of the 30 motorists sampled exceeded the speed limit. Comment on the police's claim in the light of this observation. Well, three out of 30 is not in the critical uh, region that we've found. So there is insufficient evidence to reject H0. Remember, your comment should always be whether um, you 
can or cannot reject H0. Don't talk about accepting uh, H1. It's can you is there um, insufficient evidence to reject this? So we we go with the status quo, or is there sufficient evidence to reject this? In which case, you know, you don't have to say this bit, but you would then look for another answer. And our next hypothesis, we might have to then go on and test this one and test the next one until uh, you know we we find there's not enough evidence to move on. But anyway, for you at this moment, you would either say there is enough evidence to reject H0, or in this case, there is insufficient evidence to reject H0, because 3 is not in our critical region. It was later discovered that all the motorists in the sample were part of the same race club. Comment on the validity of the model used. Uh, well, it does seem that, you know, being part of the same race club is going to potentially skew things if it's, uh, you know, if they're all boy racers and they uh, like to play uh, with the speed limit a little bit and, and push the limits then that might skew the data and um, and so the model may not be accurate uh, if it's not a, uh, a fair sample of you know the whole population that uses that motorway. Hopefully that all made sense if it didn't then let me know in the comments and I will try to explain further but to off now.